Our little baby magic are, are getting closer and closer and closer. Closer. Not there, but closer. It was a solid weekend for the Orlando Magic with a win over the Minnesota Timberwolves. And a very dour but frustrating overtime loss to Philadelphia 76ers. And guess what? That's all progress. We'll talk about a really solid weekend for the Orlando Magic coming up here on Locked On Magic. On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is March 14th, 2022. My name is Phil Prosmerich. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Magic are coming, and they want everyone to know about it, how the Magic are starting to build the kind of consistency that they need to compete more regularly and take steps forward and make the progress they're all hoping for. Plus, we will talk about the turn that's coming with the fans as the fans get behind this Orlando Magic team a little bit more. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's the first thing you listen to in the morning, whether it is on your way to work, on your way home to work, right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember this great Locked On podcast covering every team in the, in the NBA plus several other sports. Check them out wherever you download podcasts. Search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Undoubtedly, there was disappointment with how the Orlando Magic finished Sunday's game against the Philadelphia 76ers. A 116-114 overtime loss to the Sixers. A game that the Magic were in control for much of the game, led by 17 in the second quarter put themselves in every spot they needed you to win, but just couldn't scratch out that last play, whether it was making a, a, a tough shot at the end of the game, whether it was coming up with that last little bit. You know, really for the first time, Orlando could, could really point to several individual plays that were like, we make this play, we win the game. We win the game against a very good team, against a very, very solid opponent. Um it's, you know, again, it came down to Cole Anthony having a shot blocked by Matisse Seibel, Franz Wagner missing a free throw, uh, a, a, a rotation that is just a hair late that gives Tobias Harris enough room to hit the game clinching three. It's very, very easy to focus on all those things and say, and say yes, the Magic let this one slip through their fingers. And, and, and absolutely they did. Um, this is a game that the Magic are going to have to learn how to win, are going to have to learn how to to, to pick up and win. Sorry, my camera auto did fo auto focus there. Um, it, it, this is a game that 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 this team is eventually going to have to win more consistently. And yes, it, at, at the end of the day, it came down to Joel Embiid made plays. Uh, the Magic had to put so much attention on Embiid and on James Harden that it opened everything else up. And yeah, Tobias Harris got the freedom to make a big shot and save the day for Philadelphia. It, it came down to Orlando's offense is still kind of sluggish at times. If it's not working on all cylinders, it will struggle. It's gonna it's it's still a difficult thing for this team to to manage. But we all know that this team has plenty it needs to work on. We all know that this team still needs to add talent. No one is sitting here saying this is some final product. But by the same token, Sunday's game was also a symbol and a signal that this young rebuilding team is starting to put the pieces together, is starting to figure a lot of things out. Start, we've talked for a long time now about how this team is trying to build its identity, how this team is trying to build its distinct play style and the way that they want to win through fat, through getting out in transition, through defensive stops, right? getting down and defending. We talk about how the team has climbed up the ranks in terms of pace. We talk about how this team is, over the last 20, 30 games, nearly half a season now, has been ranked in the top top half of the league in defensive rating, and really for the last 20 games or so, the top 10 in the league in defensive rating. There is, there is 
a lot that this team is doing really, really well, and it's building and building and building and building and building. That's the truth of it, that this team is making progress. This team is taking some significant steps forward. And now they're doing it against really good teams. Philadelphia is a solid team. They've been playing really well since James Harden started playing for them. Um, and they, you know, they didn't shut them down by any means. And, you know, we could talk about the free throws. We'll get to that in a sec. But they didn't shut them down by any means. But they defended them about as well as they could. Hitting your season average when you're a team like the Magic against a strong offensive team, that's progress especially since the Magic have tended to struggle against the really good offensive teams in the league. Orlando is starting to figure things out. And Cole Anthony, I thought, said it really, really well. This team is hungry. They want to improve. They want to win. And they know they're going to be back in these situations again. They know they're going to be in these close games more and more and more as the season wears on and as they continue to develop and grow. But they know that this is also their time to. And this is also their time to show the rest of the league that the Magic are going to be a young team you don't want to mess with. The Magic are going to be a young team that you have to put your focus on. So yes, maybe the Sixers came out a little lackadaisical. They, the, Joel Embiid, I believe, said after the game, you know, Orlando the, that we, that Orlando is not an opponent you can disrespect. They beat a really good Minnesota team uh, on Friday. Um, that beat Miami on Saturday, uh, actually. Uh, so there, there is a, a small measure of respect. This is a team that is starting to develop its distinct style. It's starting to kind of figure out who it is and, and play that way more consistently on the floor. As the Magic put it, they're no longer at the stage where they get hit with a run and they just go down. The resiliency that we talked about, you know, as that, 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 that was able to turn a 20-point lead into a 10-point lead when the game didn't matter, now that's resi resiliency that stops a run and goes back on the attack on their own. And that's what happened in this game. For the most part, Orlando built their 17-point lead. They gave it away at the beginning of the third, and then they extended it back out to 10. The difference in the game was Joel Embiid's star power and, and, and the attention that he demands and the attention that he brings to the floor. Um, Orlando just doesn't have that right now, um, to be frank. They don't have that. Um, so that's something they're missing. Um, and it's something that they need, especially when they're uh, in the midst of their, uh, in the midst of offensive struggle. Um, but I, I think if you look at this magic team, if you look kind of at the bigger picture, if you look at where this team was at the start of the season to where it is now, it, it is really clear. This team is getting better. And it's really clear that this team is putting some of those pieces together. It's not just Markel Fultz being back, although that's a huge boost. It's not just Wendell Carter really coming into his own and feeling the offen offensive, uh, you know, kind of feeling that confidence that 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 we know he has. Um, it's it's all those little pieces coming together. It's it's the incredible buy-in that this group has. Uh, again, I, I'll say this. I, I've been through a lot of these rebuilding seasons, and it's usually around this time of year. You might have one game where there's a little bit of a spark, but you can tell when a team isn't bought into what they're doing. It happened late, no doubt. It happened, you know, all, all, all the way to the end of the season, but this is a team that's bought into what they're doing. They believe in each other. They believe in their coach, and it is 100% clear that they think that they're they're on the right track. They 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 know that they're building something. It's not going to be for this year. It's going to be for beyond this year. And the Magic are spending this last quarter of the season showing everybody what it is. When we talk about the interesting young teams, yes, Orlando probably needs a star to kind of tie the whole thing together. They need a top player to tie the whole thing together and really give them a chance at something special here. Or I, I don't think we're under any illusion about that. But when you look at this team. You see a group that is really coming into their own. And this weekend, both the wins over Minnesota and, and Sunday's loss to Philadelphia, that's a sign to the rest of the league the Magic are coming. And we'll see if they can keep building and see what they do Tuesday night against Brooklyn in a very, very difficult matchup. We'll go through the box score, talk a little bit about a, a wild home weekend as this Orlando Magic homestand continues. But first... 
a quick word from our pals at Built Bar. You know, we're already in March, deep into March, like halfway through March at this point. Beware the Ides of March tomorrow, by the way. Um, and we've all pretty much given up on our New Year's resolutions. That that feels like a lifetime ago. We already lost our hour of sleep for the year. Um, it's it, we, yeah, we're we're kind of we're kind of done. We're kind of done with those New Year's resolutions. But I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Stick to the, that New Year's resolution, no matter what it is, and eat right. Get the healthy snack you need to get the job done. That's why you should try. Built Bar. It's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. So get that chocolate fix that we all need. There's no shame in it. Get that chocolate fix that we all need and try out Built Bars today. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low calorie, high protein, high protein bars. They're better than your candy bars, which will have probably two to 300 calories. Built Bars contain most, most Built Bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You can go check out the macros yourself at built.com. You'll be blown away by just the nutritional value of these of these bars, or at least the 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 better va- nutritional value that you'll find in these bars than other chocolate bars. Come in great flavors like mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. I think a, if they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it, and it'll be delicious too. Go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your again. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning or right when we upload. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast with nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts like me. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So the Orlando Magic fall to the Philadelphia 76ers, 116-114 to 114 in overtime. A, a difficult loss, so don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, y'all know me. I, I play for the wins. I'm not necessarily here for these, these moral victories. I, I do think that this weekend was a really good sign. I do think this weekend was a really big step, and I think the Magic are playing some really good basketball right now. Um, and and obviously their record reflects it. They're 5-4 and four since the All-Star break. Um, they're, I think they still have the top def- defense in the league since the All-Star break. You know, again, we're, we're dealing with small samples, but it's still a lot of positive signs coming from this team, a lot of steps forward that, that you would expect to see from a young roster like this one. But um, I, I still think that, uh, I still think that um, you know, there's still a lot more this team needs to work on. And obviously this was a game that the Magic kind of, you know, I wouldn't say frittered away, um, but this is a game that the Magic were in control for the most part. They had led by 10 with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, and they kind of let go of the rope a little bit. Um, defensively, they fouled way too much. You could argue whether those fouls were legitimate or not. Um, certainly, I think a lot of Magic fans felt that the Sixers got favorable officiating. Um, Joel Embiid shot, I think, 14 free throws in, in the second half alone. That's not including overtime. Um, a, a big part of the Magic's defensive success has been defending without fouling. Um, that's a big reason why they've been able to have this little surge defensively. Um, and, and obviously that's what cost them in this game. You go through the final box score here. That's really the number that stands out. The Sixers shoot 32 of 37 from the foul line for the game. Joel Embiid is 15 for 17 from the foul line. James Harden is 13 for 15. Again, Orlando, I thought, did a really good job defensively. Wendell Carter deserves a ton of credit defensively against Joel Embiid. Embiid tried to truck him. He tried to post him up at every turn. And Carter stood his ground. He was unmovable. Defended and challenged shots really well. There were a few that 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 Carter defended and took himself out of position, and Embiid was able to get rebounds and putbacks. But for the most part, when Carter got Embiid on the block, Carter did hit, did a really good job. I mean, Embiid shot nine for twenty eight in the game, nine for twenty eight. Embiid really got cooking in the second half as Philadelphia made their comeback. And again, you know, I, I think we've made this point several times when, especially when the Magic play. Um, Play Philadelphia. Um, Embiid is a star, um, and 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 stars. Not only do they get the benefit of the calls, but stars completely change the game. Um, and, and it's a point that I I, I I know it's an obvious point, but it's a point that still needs to be made over and over and over and over again. Um, Orlando needs a star. They need a guy that they can truly dump the ball to get get points whenever they need points. Uh, and kind of stabilize the team, or even just put the team on on his back when they're struggling, when they when they need to to get a win. Um, you know, again, 
Joel Embiid is is my pick for MVP this year. Um, I, I it is, so that's no offense to Jokic or Giannis um, or, or Ja or anyone else. That's I, I think Embiid's been that good carrying the Sixers team. Um, it's there's there's very you got to be able to stop that bleeding. You got to be able to kind of answer that call, especially when you get into a playoff situation. I, I, I think that's that's still the big thing that this that's the biggest thing the Magic team is missing. Um, still, I, I was really impressed with how Orlando played in this one. I was still really impressed with how Orlando kind of kept punching back, kept fighting back, kept getting themselves back in the game, rallied to force overtime after giving up that lead. Um, they they did everything they needed to do to put themselves in a position to win. And again, it just came, this game came down to a few plays. It was Matisse Thibel blocking Cole Anthony's shot. It was Franz Wagner missing a free throw. Um, it was, you know, Wendell Carter and Cole Anthony getting a little confused on that last second play where Anthony uh, had a chance at the game winning three and, and ended up ended up missing it um, without without a timeout there to kind of set themselves up. It's it, it's all good learning experiences for this young team, but obviously I think Orlando Orlando had opportunities to win and put this game away, and, and they were simply unable to do so. Let's go through the final box score for you real fast. Wendell Carter had a fantastic game: twenty three points, ten for nineteen shooting, twelve rebounds for him. Three block shots. His defense again on Joel Embiid was fantastic. Uh, I thought I thought what Carter was really good. You know, maybe some bad decisions trying to challenge uh, Embiid a, a, as a scorer, um, but he got his points. He got his baskets. He did a really really good job. I felt spacing the floor and, and just doing everything that the Magic know they will need from Wendell Carter. Cole Anthony with 19 points, four for 12 shooting, three for seven from deep. All three of those threes coming in overtime. Eight for eight from the foul line, uh, eight rebounds, three assists for him. Um, you know, again, Cole Cole came alive down the stretch and in the clutch. And, you know, that was the difference in, in this game to the Indiana game uh, a few weeks ago or to the Phoenix game last week. Um, the Magic got the ball in Cole Anthony's hands and Cole Anthony made plays. Um, that has not always been the case with Cole Anthony of late. Um, he made plays, put the team in a, in, in a spot, in a position to win. Uh, and made big shots, and, and that's that's what the Magic expect and trust from Cole Anthony. It hasn't been there this year, so this was a good sign that that things might have been picking up. But you know, again, Cole's got to be a little bit smarter with the shot selection. He's got to be um, a little bit more patient. I think he's showing more patience. I think he's I think he's doing a little bit better in that in that in that category. Um, you know, again, I, I still think one of the big issues is the Magic have to keep playing at that faster pace, and Cole isn't quite a fast paced point guard. Um, you know, he's not the same as Jalen Suggs or Markel Fultz. Um, so I, I think, I think as the magic kind of shift their identity, Cole's going to either have to shift his play or change his play a little bit, or the magic going to have to shift down a little bit when, when Cole is, is in. So just, just something to keep in mind moving forward. Um, Jalen Suggs, 10 points, four for 13 shooting zero for seven from three, five rebounds, six assists. Um, Suggs has obviously got to get a shot down. Um, you know, he only played 22 minutes in this one. He sprained his ankle in the second half, um, getting, you know, we all know that there's a lot Jalen needs to work on this offseason. Um, three point shooting number one, I would say pick and roll tree number two. Um, but he still makes some incredible passes. Like you could see all the flashes of potential there. You can see all the um all the all, all, all you can see all the workings of what he can be and how good he can be moving forward. So um I, I do think Suggs is still on the right track. Obviously, the numbers aren't there, the shooting efficiency is really disappointing, but um, I still think there's a lot there to work with for him. Off the bench, all five Orlando starters had a minus plus minus. Again, a lot of that coming in, in the late fourth quarter as, as Philadelphia came back into the game. Um, all the bench players, positive plus minus. They all were part of the group that that built the 17-point lead in the second quarter. They're part of the group that rebuilt a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. And, you know, we're getting to a point where Everyone just wants to see more Markel Fultz. And again, that's not an indictment of Cole. That's not an indictment of Jalen. It's Markel Fultz is playing really, really well. Um, eight points, three for six shooting, 11 assists, hit a step back three pointer. Um, it just two steals. Uh, again, turnovers, maybe the only, only thing to complain about here, but Markel, the team just plays at such a different level and a different pace when, when Markel's out there. He keeps defenses off balance. Like they have to key in on him a little bit. Um, and, and he's so good at improvising. And that's, that's a big thing that I have about this team is you need some guys who can improvise a little bit. That's what, I mean, that's why Cole ends up with the ball a little bit more because he can improvise. He can create something out of nothing, or theoretically he can at least. Markel is the exact same way. Cole's probably doing it for himself, for his own shot. 
Markell is doing it to set up others, and it makes this offense work so well. Um, Markell is still on a minute restriction. He played 18:53 in this game, so hit 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 his minute restriction. Um, as those minute restrictions come off, if they come off this year, um, you know, again, this is probably a game we would have seen Markell play alongside Cole possibly, or or as the the lead ball handler and point guard late in the game, and, and who knows what would have happened. Um, that, but that's the point we've gotten to with Markell where we feel that, where we feel how good he can be. And, and again, just his return has been so impressive. Chubo, Kiki, 10 of his 13 points in the first half, five for seven shooting, three for five from deep. Really good defense as well. Really did some good help side defense to kind of clear, clean things up on, on the block. Um, just again, Chuma, Chuma, when he plays really well, he's really, really good. RJ Hampton, 11 points, four for eight shooting, three for six from deep. RJ Hampton's become a really nice three-point shooter. Um, I, I think I think we could safely say that at this point. Um, really capable three-point shooter. So long as you play him off the ball. He's he's not a point guard. I, I think we've kind of understood that all year. The Magic have gone out of their way not to play him at point guard. Um, he's been pretty solid on that front and pretty solid overall. Orlando shoots 45.1% from the floor, 18 for 43 from beyond the arc. Big reason they stay in the game. 14 for 20 from the foul line. We'd be talking about how great the Magic did at the foul line in this game. You know, again, maybe not the best percentage from the foul line. You know, Franz Wagner missed a game-tying free throw late in overtime. Um, but by the same token, at the same time, um, this is not a team that gets to the foul line a lot. So if they can get to 20-plus free throws per game, um, they're in pretty good shape. However, Philadelphia shoots 32 for 37 from the foul line. Joel Embiid, 15 for 17 on his own. James Harden, 13 to 15 on his own. That means 28 of 32 free, throw, free throws uh, from the two stars. Uh, that means everyone else was, what, four for five? Um, again, there was a lot of star calls in this game. I'm not saying the Magic didn't make those fouls. They probably did. They were really trying to trap and harass both of them. They were trying to be physical. They didn't defend without fouling, and that's what left the door open for Philadelphia to come back in this game. The Philadelphia 76ers defeat the Orlando Magic 116-114. to 114. We'll talk about a kind of affirming weekend at the Amway Center coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's that time of year again as the NCAA tournament is finally upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. If you're a fan listening to this podcast, if you're a Magic fan listening to this podcast, um, I'm pro- you, you probably are aware of at least some of the conversation that 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 Magic that the, the, the at least Magic Twitter that the diehard Magic fans have been having about crowds at the Amway Center. Um, the last time Philadelphia was in town, uh, jo- Joel Embiid got MVP chance. As Philadelphia closed the game out, as again, Philadelphia came back from behind to beat Orlando at the Amway Center, Joel Embiid got serenaded with MVP chance. Um, it was not the first time, it was not the last time opposing fans have invaded the Amway Center. There's been a little bit of a narrative throughout the course of the season that Orlando, that the Orlando Magic have to win their fans back. There was Jalen Suggs shouting down a, a Bulls fan after the 360 dunk um, in Orlando's blowout win over Chicago. We've had Heat fans, you know, be Heat fans. Um, it's it's frustrating. And, and certainly Sunday's game also saw a little bit of that as Philadelphia fans tried to invade the Amway Center once again. To a certain point, there's very little you can do if you're the Magic at this point. You're a young, developing team. You have the worst record in the league. You're a tough sell, and you live in a transient market like Orlando. Um, I am a second-generation Orlando resident. Uh, you know, I am as old as the Orlando Magic are. I'm kind of the first generation of Magic fans. Um, there aren't a lot of us who grew up as Magic fans stuck with the team and have passed it on to our children in the same way that Sixers fans have, that fans in bigger markets tend to do. Um, and I would I would say this, this magic rebuild that started after Dwight Howard left, um, the magic have lost a generation of fans, to be to be perfectly honest. There is a, a 10-year period now where if there were people in Orlando interested in the NBA, they probably weren't watching the magic. 
at least with Tracy McGrady, you had something you could hold on to. And, and I don't think the Magic took advantage of that that era as much as they could. And certainly that was a rough time to be a fan too because of the uh, because of the arena situation and the rumors that the team were, was about to leave, um, as well as, yes, the probably latent and blatant racism um, that still existed in Central Florida in, in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, but, but undoubtedly, too, it's going to take a while for the Magic to rebuild their fan base. But the one thing that has always proven um, is, is that if you put a good product on the floor, if you put an exciting product, if you put something that's entertaining and energetic, people in this city will, will, will flock to it. There's clearly a, a, a fan base. There's clearly a sports fan base in town that wants a team of their own to cheer for. Um, you know, I, I, you give Orlando City a lot of credit for building a really strong fan culture. And some of that has to do with that's how soccer is. It's not the NBA. They're, they're two very different fan cultures. Um, but you go to an Orlando City game and you can sense the, the, the civic pride as much as anything else. You put a product on the floor that people want to cheer for, they will show up. Steve Clifford mentioned that in 2019 when the Magic had, had that big homestand, had that undefeated homestand that propelled them into the playoffs. They had a come from behind victory over Memphis um, in that homestand. And Steve Clifford said after the game, I told them, this is what this crowd can do for you. This is what this, this crowd can do for you. you. You've earned it. It's something that's earned in this town, um, the attention. Now, again, in Phil, you know, as, as JJ Reddick kind of put it, or hinted at at least, um, some players would rather be booed and know that they are being paid attention to, even if they're playing poorly. And that's certainly how it works in some other markets and more traditional kind of stronghold markets with generations of fans. Here in Orlando, that's not how it works. In Orlando... The Magic have to fight for attention. They have to, there's so much things to do in this town. They have to fight for your attention. No one's just going to show up. And for some people, they're going to show up when their team is in town. And so the trick is trying to figure out how to convert those fans into Magic fans, how to get that next generation of fans to buy in on the Magic and stay in on the Magic. That's obviously going to be done on the court. And this weekend was a really big weekend on that front. Uh, Friday's win over the Minnesota Timberwolves was the 118-110 uh, win. was the loudest I've heard the Amway Center all year. In the third quarter, as Orlando was really kind of pushing themselves into the lead and pushing the pace, uh, it, pushing themselves uh, ahead of Minnesota for good, the crowd really swelled. And you could you could feel that the, the players were giving the crowd energy and the crowd was sending the energy back to the players. And you could see them just gain confidence and make play after play after play. Some of it has to do with Markel Fultz. This town loves Markel Fultz. Um, you know, just I think everyone appreciates the work that he's put in, the fact that he's never given up on himself, he's never given up on his talent and his ability, and, and understanding that Orlando provided him a second chance. This is this this his story is really incredible, and I think I think for you know I think that he more as much as any other player on this team. I think he relates to Orlando fans in, in a really significant way. I think Orlando fans are in his corner more than anything else. And his return has re-energized the fan base. It's not just casual fans happening on the Amway Center on a Friday night. I see it uh, in talking with Magic fans on Twitter and, and on the subreddit. Markel Fultz has re-energized his fan base and re-energized his team in, in significant ways, in ways that I think we all expect him to do on the court, but also off the court. Um, and, and I would imagine that Jonathan Isaac will do much the same. Is, is, I think Isaac is certainly uh, certainly uh, pretty popular as well uh, among among the fan among the fan base. This is all to say that building up the fan base takes work, but the Magic are doing the work. Like I said, Orlando is starting to play a lot better on the court. Everyone's seeing the progress they're making. Everyone's seeing the steps that they're taking uh, and the way that they're moving ahead. Everyone sees and feels this team taking shape. But what else is happening is the fans are starting to buy into. The players are bought in on this. And, and yes, the players understand what's going on. But the fans are starting to buy into. And they're starting to defend their home crowd, their home turf. Sunday's game, yeah, Philadelphia's tried to come into the Amway Center again. They booed Markel Fultz when he came onto the floor. And Magic fans shouted them down. Magic fans made their presence felt. 
there hasn't been a lot to kind of puff your chest out about this season. And, and, and this season isn't about wins and losses. And I think, I think magic fans are, are understanding of that, that all they've wanted to see is a team that plays hard, makes progress and, and gives them some hope for the future. That was always the goal for the season to begin with. And the fact that now this fan base appears to be on board, you know, maybe not with the crazy attendance numbers that you want to see quite yet, but certainly with their voices. Now that the fans seem to be on board, it seems like this team is ready to take some significant steps forward. And we're seeing that. And that's what this weekend ultimately became about. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find us on Twitter at Locked On Magic. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Shut your tune in. Him like Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey. All the fun ways to sell the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. You can find me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. And of course, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at O Magic Daily. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Now that you're done with us, go make your second listen to Locked On NBA. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.